December 1448 and we've already crushed the Ottomans, got back all of our lands and then some in this RNG proof 1.36 King of Kings Byzantium strategy that I've developed in collaboration with Paradox Interactive. Big thanks for the early access and for the sponsorship. Make sure you get the DLC for yourself using my code in the description below would really help out the channel a lot since it would tell Paradox that it's worth sponsoring my channel and it would also encourage me to make more videos. In fact, I'm gonna cover every single nation that is getting a mission tree and flavor in 1.36 Byzantium update. If we get 7,000 likes on today's video in the first week after it's out and we're gonna do the second part for this campaign if we get 8,000 likes in the first week and guess what? As soon as we reach the 7 or 8,000 like goal, instantly I'm gonna release the video because I've already recorded videos in early access and the best part, you can get the save. This is gonna be available to everybody. Link to my Discord in description. You'll have it available on my Discord. So now let's wrap it back to 1444 to see how I did this, eh? The first thing most of you will know notice is that we have a lot of changes on the map. For example, the province of uh, Burgas or Mesambria starts as a part of the Byzantine Empire. This is actually historical. The Byzantines did own the entirety of the coastline here, all the way up to the city of Varna, essentially. And they also owned uh, these islands here, which apparently are a part of um, Genoa. So that's not historical, but hey, it's fine. I get it. They don't want to make even more small islands in the area. They already made Lesbos and Scio a separate island, so it's fine. I know that there's no place plans to add any more provinces as there's already a lot of provinces in the game. We also start with some extra debuffs though. We have increased autonomy in the southern parts of our country here in the uh, Moray and Achaean and Corinth areas. We start with some absolutely atrocious privileges that we need to get rid of. <laughs> we have the uh, Clericoi which is the church estate renamed and revamped. Union of the churches. Now this gives us relations actually with the papal state so that's a positive positive here. We do start uh, with 115 relations with the Pope, but it also gives us tolerance of the true faith minus four and missionary strength minus 10%. So essentially we cannot convert anybody and we have barely no bonuses from our own religion. So that's not Gucci. Then for the Eugenies, which are our military estate, we start with the deteriorating army that offers fort assault minus 75%, morale of armies minus 15, reinforcement Enforcement speed and army tradition DK. Yeah, this this is really bad. This is probably the one we really need to get rid of most. In order to get rid of most of these, we have to grow and we actually need to win a war against the Ottomans, for example, to get rid of one of them. I personally found, since I got the early access, three different strats that still work. I'm going to show you one of those in this video, of course. So pay close attention if you're trying to follow through with the video yourself. Let's also not forget to talk about the last two debuffs of the uh, Burger Estate or the uh, M. Poroi. We have the Reliance on Republics that offers us a ship building time plus 200%. So this was intentionally made to make it so that you take a lot longer building your ships and as consequence it gives more time for the Ottomans to snowball or maybe even attack you since it's 200 times more time to build said ships. Also tax exemption for the Latin merchants gives a global trade efficiency, global trade power minus 10% and trade efficiency minus 10% as well. That's pretty bad. But there is something here which is going to be very beneficial to us. The mercenary cost minus 25%. Uh, that's right, boys. Pretty much the easiest way to crush the Ottomans is using my old strats from 1.32 or 1.33. I don't remember when I did it last. But the mercenary strat. We basically merc the schnapps out of it. Fight the Ottomans mano a mano. Let's take a good look also at the mission tree. Now, we do have a lot of missions. And I mean a lot of missions. Look at all these juicy things here with some of the later down missions here for example the theme system mend the schism as well as an option as well now the uh purple brew that offers the warehouses of the east and so on there's a lot of good stuff my favorite here is avenge 1071 i think some of you might know what that's all about hey huh? huh? it's about the battle of manzikert which occurred on the 26th of august 1071 and it allowed the entrance of the seljuk turks into the anatolian peninsula it happened somewhere in this area if i'm not mistaken 
taken, which at the time was the border of the Byzantine Empire. So you can imagine, we need to get a big chunk of land to get back to those particular borders, don't we now? Now, of course, in good old looty fashion, we're gonna start with our estates. And guys, pay close attention, because these estates will make the difference between you losing and winning the war very easily in the early part of the campaign. So really, pay very close attention. This is really important. We're gonna give out the plus one admin and the plus one military, and we're not giving the plus one diplomatic, because instead we're gonna be selling titles, we need the money at the start, we're gonna be summoning the diet going for whichever agenda best suits us here, two allies is fine, seize the crownlands afterwards, and you're probably wondering why am I able to do this mission already, it's because I focused on my military power, we're also gonna get a military advisor since we're gonna need one anyway, and yes, after this we can get from the Serbs up to 250 ducats based on their attitude and opinion, so we want to be allied with them before we click this. To get that alliance with the Serbs is actually very easy. We can just uh, scornfully insult one of their rivals. So there you go. Scornful insult. That's going to give us an extra 25 relations. We're going to get religious diplomats. Boom shakalaka. And that gives us enough relations to get the alliance with them. So once we click this mission, we are potentially going to get up to 250 ducats. Those ducats with the sale of title ducats should be enough for the first phase of the campaign. We're also going to give some more privileges, of course including supremacy over the crown and for the first time ever in any of my videos I'm giving this one out I am that desperate the Eugenie's officer writes this is gonna allow me to recruit a general with 40 army tradition this means that this Chad Lord can potentially have two or three siege pips which will make the difference between losing or winning the war in the early part of the campaign so it's all about how many times you're willing to alt to four if you know what I'm saying of course let's also not forget about the increased levy so we get the 26% national manpower modifier and we're also going to be giving out here a few more privileges including the emporoi financial demand for the national tax and emporoi force draft this allows us to get the uh, draft warship one early correct for zero percent the cost and 50 percent the time so it's significantly faster than the other ships that we're going to be building now i'm also going to be sending a scornful insult to florence because they are a rival of the pope so that brings me up to 140 relations i just need to send the Pope a gift in a couple of days and that should be enough to get the alliance with the Pope. Now the alliance with the Pope is really great because we get the impending doom mission if we have an alliance with the Pope when we finish this mission and that's going to be very easy. We just need two allies and basically 100% force limit for our units. We're going to get a lot of permanent claims but most importantly we get minus 15% mercenary cost for our union of the churches privilege plus remember we also get another minus 25% mercenary cost from the tax exemption from the Latin merchants. So we get 40% cheaper mercenaries from these two privileges that are technically debuffs. This is Paradox's way of secretly telling us that mercenaries is the main strat to win as the Byzantines. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it so we can get 40% cheaper mercs. That is a massive freaking deal right there. Also, if we go over to our privilege and we hover over the reliance on the republics, this is a fine print here. If we get get 50 relations with Venice or Genoa, we get a minus 100 less penalties rather than plus 200. So the Genoese are probably the easiest to get those relations with. But then again, the Venetians are not too bad also. Unfortunately, they are rivals with the Pope and I'm going to be getting an alliance with the Pope. So I guess my main 50 relations is going to have to be with the Genoese. Plus lads, we can get 20 prestige from Patronage of the Arts because it's below zero prestige because we send those two scornful insults. And as consequence, we start with 15 prestige. We essentially start with more prestige than we did. And we also managed to uh, scornfully insult two nations in the process, getting us two alliances, valuable alliances for that matter. But we're not done. We're also going to give the expansion of Zealotry, which gives 5% morale of armies, negating by 5% the 15% that we start with as a debuff. There's more privileges that you can give out, like the clerical education and the other ones that are really good. But I'm going to keep it like it is right now, since I already have insanely high influence 91 for the freaking nobility is huge because i need to take uh, some crownlands from the ottomans and the less influence you have for the estates the more crownlands you take in the war right now we have a lot of influence so we're not going to take as much as we would otherwise but we do need these privileges as you can see they make a massive difference in the campaign itself rival wise whatever you can rival it's up to you i recommend not rivaling if possible the genoese or the Venetians.
animations because you might be able to use them in the future. It's a small chance, but better than no chance, right? And if possible, of course, Rival Epirus, because we're going to be uh, pretty much doing this as our first war in one month. We're going to be recruiting the Free Company in the southern bits of uh, Greece. And we're going to be transferring our army here as well, since we're going to be uh, attacking Epirus first, as I said before. Let's also not forget to draft the ship for war. And we're also going to be queuing up some more ships. Now, you guys probably already guessed it, but I am going to release Bulgaria from the province of Mesambria. Since they have a lot of cores that uh, we can get from the Ottomans. But most importantly, since this would be another fortification for the Ottomans to struggle to take when sieging us down. Plus, the Bulgarians might even recruit some of their own units. So that's a possibility that would help us out quite a little bit if they do. Especially if they recruit the Free Company, which is likely. And that's 4,000 units from the get-go. Make sure we got both of these bad boys unattached. And let's see what Papa Generalius is going to look like. He is actually a freaking Chad Lord. Holy mother of God. Two Siege, two Shock. I'm cool with that. I'm 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 definitely very much so cool with this dude. Sure, he's not a two-star, but he's not that trash either. Overall, he's pretty decent. Since we have recruited the Free Company, we have uh, a stronger army. And as such, the, um, the Albanians are willing to ally us. So we will try to use Mr. Skandenberg, the Chad Lord 5551 beast in our words against the ottomans and with that one diplo rep extra we can also do uh, this a mission well not mission get this alliance with the pope which in turn means that we can do impending doom so we essentially now have 2.59 morale of armies we start with uh, minus 15 from deteriorating armies but because we uh we gained quite a little bit of uh bonuses we negate all of that so we're back to square zero it's as if we have no debuffs whenever we're fighting the ottomans militarily at least no debuffs plus we have 40 percent cheaper mercenaries lads so we're gonna recruit a ton more mercenary companies before we declare the war not just yet though the war against Epirus, we don't need that many troops against them they're fairly weak as it is we do need more diplo slots so i'm gonna give out this privilege strong duchies to get the extra diplo relation slots and we don't go over our diplo relation slots for the time being and with the missions look at all the claims we'll get lads look at all these uh, juicy claims right here all right so defensive mentality let us ask the serbians for help fingers crossed they give us the money because i absolutely require the money more than anything else guys we also have the theodosian walls we can repair these it's going to cost a hundred ducats and it's going to take one year to upgrade a max level level three is going to give plus one fourth level and defensiveness and garrison size i will not use my money for this though i need the money to fight against the ottomans after the first war with the ottomans sure i will upgrade it, but I honestly think that it's not worth it wasting the money when you're going to need it for mercenaries as much as you will. Take note, we also increased our land force limit a little bit to 12 by releasing Bulgaria as a vassal, so definitely super worth doing that. We're also going to be vassalizing, of course, Epirus and taking the province of Arta, so they're just going to have the province of uh, Cephalonia. We're doing it so we can use their fleets, essentially. I'm also going to send a scornful insult to the Ottomans because they're rivals with the Austrians, and Austria is likely going to ally us if we increase our relations with them. Right now, we're at 40 minus 64 so that's really not so bad overall come on three days don't ally anybody please wait what wait we're right we lost the humiliation oh because we released bulgaria actually that's not a bad thing because now we can rival the ottomans boom skibbity boom ba -ba -da -bim 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 -bim. that's what uh that's what humans say usually um that's a very human behavior right there in case you're wondering now let's go schnapple dupe them shall we lads oh happy day Oh, happy day when Epirus fail. I'm not going to destroy Epirus's fleet, but I'm going to try and get a hold of this so I can actually enforce my demands. And I can also take this fort a little bit faster by having the sea tile next to it. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to get the uh, naval school right so I can get a better admiral. Again, I don't normally go for these, but uh, in this particular case, I kind of have to because I also don't want to waste my uh, diplo points. Now, we could cancel the privilege for the uh, clergy, but... <laughs> I want to keep that alliance with the Pope. And most importantly, I also don't want to get bad relations with the Austrians. And I want to keep the mercenary cost reduction privilege for the initial war with the Ottomans. So unfortunately, we're going to have to survive. Oh, wait, the Albania. I uh, know I wanted to ally them. No, I mean, we'll marry them. All right, we got the 200 ducats from the Serb. The easiest way to get that is by getting 150 relations with them. So that's fairly uh, doable. You just got to get the alliance, got to get a royal marriage. You can even improve relations a bit, but not necessary. If you really 
struggling, you can also just offer military access or something of the sorts, which is going to increase their relations by a lot more. I got the We Are Kin event, so that gave me an extra 50. Now let's go ahead and uh, set up the Encourage Development Edict here, so we can dev it up twice, and as such, we can do the next mission, Hexamillion Wall. We can defy the Ottomans, reconstruct the wall, and the decision, rebuild the Hexamillion Wall, allows us to fortify the province of Corinth, or we can just focus on our capital and get 25% cheaper Theodosian Walls. I'm gonna go for the Hexamillion Wall personally, because I think it's a really good spot to get this in. It is a Highlands, and it prevents access to the other two provinces to anybody here until they capture the province of Corinth. So it's a really well-placed fortification, in my opinion. Plus, now to get defense and debt, we, we just need two more mercenary companies or no mercenary companies and 100% land force limit. We either get 10% morale of armies as consequence if we go down the regular units path or mercenary cost and discipline if we go down the mercenary path. So considering we already have all of those bonuses for our mercenaries, of course, we're going to go for the mercenary path, making even cheaper by another 10% mercenaries and 5% mercenary discipline. But we do have to be very fast with this because unfortunately the Ottomans snowball insanely fast. Alternatively, we could also try and get the knights. I noticed they sometimes love to help me out. We would have to uh, improve relations with them a little bit more. So let's do that, I guess, for now. My favorite part about the Hexamillion wall is that you also get local defender dice roll bonus plus one, which is a huge deal, guys. I wish we had that for the Theodosian wall too, not just for this one. Actually, I just realized I, uh, I canceled the ship in Corinth. I'm going to need to get my mercenaries in Corinth so I cannot keep that busy for the next four freaking years. Ooh, court factional influence roller. Okay, I don't mind if I do. Come on, boys. You need to get it done, please. Oh, man. These guys are raiding me now for real. Probably should have gotten the alliance before they raided me, to be fair. Oh, yes, please. Uh, Why don't you just go 99%, okay? Why... <laughs> Why stay at 49% when you can do 99, right? Well, that's all, folks. We got Arta. We're going to take the city of Arta ourselves because they do have our core over there. And we're going to vassalize what's left of them. Force religion, of course. Take all their money. Take all their women. Take all their schnapps. And that that's about it. Alrighty, boys. That is one down the drain. A little bit more to go. We can do false despots now, which is going to give us 75 diplo power because we vassalize them rather than fully annexing them and we also gain permanent claims on the southern bit of uh, the Italian peninsula and a core on Cephalonia so when we can annex we can fully annex in one go. I have to say I'm a little bit uh, torn between either getting the morale of armies or getting the uh, permanent claims and so on. I'd say that both of them are pretty decent. It's more of a matter of what you're more comfortable with I guess would be the case right and I absolutely messed up by not getting the Knights Alliance beforehand because because um, I cannot get it anymore because I got bad relations with them because they raided. So yeah, it's going to be impossible to get that uh, straight access now. I'm going to get one stability and I'm going to start recruiting my mercenaries. We're going to yellow this, boys. We're actually going to be freaking yellowing this. Now, the palace guards, which are a unique mercenary unit here, are pretty freaking overpowered if you ask me. Look at that general. 4341. And it's overall not too expensive to get them considering it's also a little bit bigger. It's five units rather than uh, your usual four. Holy mother of God. High Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, Hyduks have a five siege general. What? Uh, I think we got the gang. This is what I like to call the boys. We got the boys here, lads. We got the boys, okay? Look at the chattiest Maximus boys over there. And let's do the defense in debt, which offers us the mercenary cost reduction and discipline. So we're not gonna completely go bankrupt, at least not as fast as we would otherwise, right? All right, we got the 50 relations with the Genoese. So it's a lot less of a debuff now. We're building ships a little bit faster. Unfortunately, the ones we started building before four are still going to take the same amount of time. It's, it doesn't lower the time that they uh, have left anymore, which kind of sucks. I wish it did, but it doesn't. It's also not just in your Byzantium game, but in general, a good idea to check neighboring nations that you might have a common enemy with. So for example, here, the Ottomans, of course, want to kill everybody around them, but Karaman also hates their guts. Unfortunately, they are our rivals, so we cannot ally them. There's other nations, though, that we could ally, like Georgia, for example, that has vital interests in Chanik, so if we get an alliance with the Georgians, then more than likely, yep, there you go, 
we can call them in as long as we promise to give them a land. We're obviously not going to give any lands to anyone, but calling them in means that Akko Yunlu is going to focus on them rather than focusing on us. And then as such, maybe we can peace out Akko Yunlu by giving them some Georgian lands, or at least we can just distract Akko Yunlu from coming into the Balkan side and we can do our thing here as consequence. The Poles managed to get the march over Moldova, so it's likely they will help us out in the second war against the uh, Ottomans. I started improving relations with them. I'm also very close to getting that alliance with the Emperor of the HRE2, you know, the fake Roman Empire. But uh, but yeah, this is going to be just us against the Ottomans. It's going to be mano a mano here, that's for sure. The first war, at least. And this is what I was waiting for, lads. The Ottomans declared their war on Dulkadir, so it's going to give us a little bit of a shot here. Whilst they're fighting in the uh, eastern parts of Anatolia, we might be able to snatch enough lands, maybe even get the forts in Salonik and Gelibolu. So I'm going to wait for their units to cross on over. I'm checking that out now. There you go. They're starting their march across. Now we're also going to make uh, Epirus loyal before we declare the war by doing this. Developing their provinces once lowers their liberty desire by five. So remember that whenever you want to make your uh, vassals loyal and you have some extra mana points lying around, dev their land. We did that because it doesn't make any difference. We're going to integrate them instantly. And more importantly, if they manage to attach their fleet to our... Wait, did they just destroy their fleet? They did. Oh god, they just deleted their fleet, bro. Oh, this is gonna really suck without the uh, knight's fleet. That is for sure really suck. That's why I'm not backing down. I'm gonna go full on, full on. Let's go, baby. Turhala, the war target. Calling everybody here. That was Volt, lads. That was Volt. Oh, God, this is gonna be horrible, isn't it? Oh, we need good RNG. Please, give me, give me, give me, give me good RNG, please. I also did not ferry my troops over to Constantinople to take the fort in Gelibolu for a very important reason. If I'm not able to take Gelibolu in time and I cannot barrage the fort because I don't have enough ships, so I would be at the mercy of RNG, and if I don't get it in time, my entire army is going to get stack wiped because they cannot retreat anywhere except Constantinople. So this is a big gamble. I don't like to gamble. I'm going to take Selanik, and if uh, all thing goes to schnapps, then I can retreat back to Moria, Ahea, get new mercenaries and so on, and they have to siege down Corinth to get to me, so I would technically be safe rather than get my entire army stack wiped. So that's why. That's literally why. Now, I do fully expect the Ottomans to, um, to push me, so whenever that happens, I'm going to be ready for them. Oh, so here we we get the option of removing this privilege but again we need it because of the mercenary cost so we're gonna keep it and we're gonna get the hundred ducats from it too why not might as well right we got campaign into Thessaly now to support the expedition is gonna give us one military mana for our leader and is gonna convert the heir to a general 3341 absolute chad lord but we lose 150 military points which is pretty much all of it or we just get this without the um the penalty we would lose out on 10 siege ability i'm gonna go for this because I did get a pretty decent general from um, Estates Privilege, right? Looming Catastrophe. Well, that is pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> One stability, 10 fort defense for a while, or morale of armies for a while. I want to say morale of armies, but boy, that stability is juicy as schnapps, man. I'm going to go for the stability. That's like a lot of mana points. <laughs> we're going to be switching over our diplomat, and we're going to be uh, getting a spy network in the Ottoman Empire to help out with siege ability, of course. It's not much, but better than nothing, right? Right. Hey, you know what? The combined fleets of Athens, Knight... Wait, what the hell is the Knights doing here? No, that's they're not in the war. Never mind. Uh, Albania, Albania, us, Athens, and uh, Epirus. We actually have more ships than the Ottomans. So, oh my god, if we rush, we might actually win this super fast, man. That is going to be the best RNG I had so far. And I just realized my face is massive. Let's, let's make that a little bit smaller. <laughs> Giovanni Giustiniani, the famous Genoese captain that defended Constantinople till the last breath with this band of merry troopers is going to be one of our generals, a 2230, a thousand manpower and 306 sailors representing the Genoese, brave Genoese that tried to defend the Roman Empire till its last breath. Really, really fascinating uh, history about Giovanni. In fact, I would love to see Hollywood make a movie about that man and, uh, you know, the whole time period would be a really cool movie in my opinion, the fall of Constantinople. We don't have many movies about that particular period. I also love the fact that they're essentially busy going Going between either side of the crossing here since they don't know what to do because they got to fight on both sides the ai is getting massively confused right now <laughs> oh let's go everybody we got friendly relations towards us by the austrians so we got 124 with 40 as soon as we finish the war we can get that juicy alliance with the austrians hot diggity dong along i'm also going to improve with the mamelukes because i have a strong suspicion i might be 
able to get an alliance with them. 52 with 76 basically means I will get that alliance once I finish the war. And I'm going to get that so that I can easily use them in the next war against the Ottomans. I want to just remove the Ottomans the sooner the better so that I can have an easier time afterwards when dealing with the, the particular regions, right? With Anatolia and the Balkans. Ooh-wee, baby! That's what I'm talking about. 172 days. That five freaking siege general is schnapple and everything. He is absolutely schnapple loop You get that? I said schnapple no, seriously, I, I have issues. I have a lot of issues. Oh, I just remembered, guys. This video in particular is going to be getting a lot of attention for Paradox. So if you have any feedback about this DLC, so whatever you feel you like, you don't like, be honest. They really appreciate your feedback and they'll be reading it from the comment section. So take the opportunity, write down in the comment section everything you want to talk about. Let them know this is your chance. Hell, it's even your chance to let them know what DLCs you want for the next uh, deal, what countries you want for the next DLC to be uh, covered, right? Because we all know that the next DLC is going to come middle of next year or something like that, right? Okay, we're actually not so bad. 3.27 and 3.1 uh, morale is really, really decent. The discipline's a little bit of an issue, but we do have the Chad Lord General. We got Skandenberg, we got Giovanni, we have everybody that uh, we need as generals to cover up for that. And it looks like Akoyunlu also is getting their asses handed to them by the Georgians, so I'm happy to see that. I gave some objectives to the Georgians, but they're not really doing any of the objectives I want him to do so uh hopefully that's gonna change what the hell is Valachia doing here boys are you at war oh no Poland's attacking them oh that sucks snaps bro for them sucks for them it's not so bad for me overall I guess closer towards me for the Poles means easier for me to get the alliance all right baby minus 14 at the start that is really decent let's get some amazing dice rolls please or siege progress better yet now you might be wondering why are you not sending a detachment over here to siege down Edirn I did and guess what but they almost got stack wiped by the Ottoman army because they came out of Burga. So I'm going to take it during after I've secured uh, Gelibolu because then I have the sea tile too. So I pretty much have the Balkans for myself and I can also wipe out this army before crossing into the Anatolian bit. But again, I need to make sure this is taken first and foremost. Come on, dude. Freaking 42%. Can you just fall already? I'm so worried these guys are going to get this fort right now. Woo wee baby. Let's go. Let's go take a deer next. I think I'm gonna, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna take a deer in first. And then I'm gonna, actually, you know what? No, actually, I'm gonna attack him. I'm gonna attack him because this is a defensive battle for me, right? So make sure everything is consolidated here. Get these units as well in one army. Boom, shakalokos. They don't seem to have a general assigned there. So I guess their army with the general is fighting in here. Yes, that is seems to be the correct thing. Also, not gonna lie, I am honestly shocked how good the Georgian troops have been. They've won three battles against Akko Yunlu that uh, has given me a little bit of war score too in the process, right? Okay, baby, come on. We need to win. We need to win. Give me that battle. Give me the freaking battle. <gasps> Okay, let's actually start pushing into Anatolia. How many troops they got? 14,000! I am so on fire right now. I am so on fire. Hydukes. Hydukes are the ones with the general, right? Yes, sir. I'm gonna leave the Hydukes and the free company behind to siege it out. The rest of you bastards march on over, and I mean, march on over to Anatolia. Let's take it. Let's it's ours. It's all ours. Oh, hey, after a thousand years, we managed to get one galley. That is uh, awesome, I guess. Yeah, it looks like they're about to finish their war here with the Dulcadir, so I gotta keep an out for their army. 14,000 still their Ottoman troops, so we gotta be careful. I'm not gonna take it lightly, that is for sure. Oh man, if we get this, oh dude, we can essentially have removed the Ottomans, because we're gonna uh, truce break. We're 100% gonna truce break. I don't give a schnapps. I'd rather take the AE hit and get rid of the Ottomans, in my opinion. That's the best choice right there. But yeah, as I was saying, we're likely gonna be able to get them out of the Balkans in the first 10 to 15 years, in my opinion. Dude, what is up with Georgia? They are on freaking fire, my man. And look at that juicy sprite they just got all shiny and stuff bro i'm loving this i'm genuinely loving this we got some western support that's pretty cool georgia's just wiping out the ottoman troops wherever they see them that is amazing speaking of let's actually do the exact same taking out their units whenever they uh, just recruited them is also by far one of the best things ever because it denies them the ability to uh, recover their strength and doing this uh the earlier right makes it for a much more easier game overall also guys i had a lot of trial 
months for this but this particular method that I'm using right now with the mercenaries in every single one of my trial runs work so I have to say this is RNG proof because there's no orange there are small things obviously with every game right but overall the mercenary strat works by far every single time obviously if you're completely trash at the game that's a different story and i will make it so that i leave in the final edit as much information as possible so you can follow along with this video if you want to recreate the uh, roman empire yourself as the byzantines all right let's bring chadius 5 cgs maximus hyducus to this province next dude georgia just got the freaking oh my lord i am loving georgia as an ally i might even keep them for a little bit longer bro i was gonna do this and peace out the you know Akko Yun Lu, which you know I might still no I'm not gonna do it no no I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna piece him out um, with the white piece because I'm genuinely impressed with how freaking good uh the performance of the Georgians has been bro what the snaps is up with this man what the snaps is up with this seriously I'm loving this run as it is I'm freaking loving it I have essentially become the AI I'm, I'm I mean I mean I am human guys I'm um I'm a, I was born <laughs> I was totally born not spawned on the planet Shbobagadubs. I wasn't. No, that would, that would be so silly. Imagine. <laughs> Totally not. I'm gonna occupy this though, because this is not going to Albania, that's for sure. I'm also gonna take the coastline here, maybe. Yeah, why not? And give this over to the Bulgarians, sir. Well, actually, we don't need to do that from there. We can just do it from here. Oh, that's where they draw the line. They're like, no, we're not giving that to Bulgaria. <laughs> so it might seem like uh, we're gonna need to continue the war. Spare no expenses, of course. Inflation is nothing compared to the magnificent reality of getting mana ponts. Mana ponts is the best points ever all right let's uh, help siege this down a little bit faster and let's bring our units here so we can siege this also down faster 35 percent from zero percent hot damn that is bro i just i love five siege generals they're literally the best thing ever i mean by comparison this strat is so good that the ottomans didn't even finish sieging down dual kadir whilst we completely wiped out their entire freaking country so i'm gonna go ahead and say this is the best strat for 1.36 king of kings byzantium and you know what i already feel a lot of uh small pp lords gonna be like mm, ludi mm, this is suspicious bro so i'm thinking to just make the save game available to everybody not just patrons and channel members and i just realized uh, i'm not gonna give tolchu i'm actually gonna instead take this province for myself give ohri to bulgaria uh because I don't want Albania to have any sort of access here at all. You never know what might happen in the future, right? Come on, just need a couple more provinces, I'm assuming. Just a new, just a few more, bro. Just a few more. Come on. Let's go, baby. Ooh, wee, ooh, wee. 96. Can we do it? Can we do it? We can do it. Hello. That is going to be 130, 124, and Coalition of Ottomans and Karaman as expected. All right, cool. I'm doing it, boys. I'm doing it. Booyah, Snokos, 30,000, and they lost way more than us because we got as Chadicus Maximus and we're gonna now do a few more things like reverse the downfall 25 power projection war exhaustion diplo rep everything good to go alongside it a little bit of cash and manpower I'm loving it and uh, these guys just gained independence so guess who's gonna be attacking them it's this guy because we're gonna we're gonna establish ourselves in Italy of course it's my land after all I am the Roman Empire okay and look at this 1444 we got back all of our lands we pushed out the the Ottomans and we've actually destroyed them they only have 7,000 manpower 15,000 troops in the field and we're gonna push for a second war of course all right, I uh, recorded a little bit of an intro for the video now. I can continue. So I like the new uh, quality of life stuff that they've added also. Like, for example, the uh, center of trade upgrade is really good. So now I know I can upgrade the center of trade whenever I have the money for it. Of course, it's not a priority because I want to get the churches. So I'm going to save up for the churches first off. But let's get our troops back since we're going to be doing uh, more wars, obviously. A lot more wars. We want to get rid of the Ottomans whilst they're still super weak. Let's also get that alliance with the uh, Austrians that we got from before i mean that we managed to get friendly relations with from before and we're very close with the mamluks i don't think i need them anymore to be fair but let's see i will attack the venetians too at some point i want to really attack the serbians but um you know i got that thing called an alliance with them so i kind of have to break the alliance oh boy that's gonna be schnabadoops isn't it yep it's gonna be very schnabadoops it's gotta be done though it's gotta be done wait no i got a royal marriage too okay well that's bad 
bad. You know what? It's not too bad. I'm gonna focus on Naples since I got the claims and on the second war with the Ottomans. And then after I'll focus on um, on the Serbian bits, I guess. Now, the reality is, guys, I did not get uh, diplomatic and admin advisor because I didn't know how much money I'm gonna need for the war. And I wanted to just basically play it safe, right? Okay, we're gonna make the Venetians our next rivals because we're gonna be taking provinces from them anyway. We can get an alliance with, I mean, royal marriage with the Austrians. Sure, we can do that. Okay, so all we need to fix our army is just get a level two military advisor. All right, that's that's not bad at all. Uh, we could get this guy, discipline advisor. Hell yeah, baby. We got repair of the army. We got rid of that horrible privilege that was destroying our army. So now our armies are in fact some of the best in the freaking world. 3.3 morale. Well, it's not really the best. Holy shit, these guys got four morale. How? What the hell did they do, man? Oh, they teched up. <gasps> no shot. They just got military tech four. How far am I from that? I'm not too far from it. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. They still have only 15,000 units, so we should be fine with the second war. And I just realized I forgot to make a separate save game so I can put it in my Patreon folder. I'm going to do that right now. I'm actually going to make it available to everybody, not just patrons and channel members. This has to be one of my favorite runs in uh, 1.36. So I've actually recorded a lot of videos for 1.36 so far. I've got like, I've done uh, Karabakh, I've done Ardabil, I've done Karako Yunlu, I've done Mamluks and so on. One. out of all of them this right here is by far my favorite run in my test runs prior to this one i managed to get some insane freaking thing i i, I basically got all of the italian basically eastern roman empire borders by 147 that is how freaking insane it can be as the byzantines granted you need some really good rng but it's doable with the new mission tree and the new flavor it's really really doable like the pronoia system is insane my man if we make these guys here our pronoia not only do we get all these juicy modifiers and everything but we inherit them for free. It costs zero freaking mana points. That is just so broken, man. I mean, what I did before was I gave them all of these lands, right? And then I did the same with a few more vassals and the Anatolian bits and Syria and so on. And I got like 700 development with zero diplo points because it doesn't cost anything to integrate. It is so, so broken, man. I love it. I really hope they don't change this on release. And I'm not saying anything um, to, to the development team because I don't want them to change it. I want you guys to experience how broken it is and then maybe they can change it with the next patch Let's see can also make Naples our rival. That is a good good good. All right Let's see how much aggressive expansion we're getting for this uh, Declare war. Oh my god 119, but that's mostly with uh, the Anatolian nations Tunis and so on not really anybody that I care about too much Karako Yunlu is fairly done as well seven six thousand units is nothing really All right We managed to get some units by the border in the northern bit so we can quickly get a hold of the Balkan provinces and let's go once more. Reconquest of Uskup. Arrivederci, Atomonskos. Arrivederci, boys. Y'all gonna get schnappel dupe right now, lad. Y'all gonna get schnappel dupe. Because we use the reconquest for our vassal. We're barely getting any aggressive expansion once more. So we'll be able to essentially get all of the Balkan provinces in just the first couple of years. Removing the Ottomans from there. And then even getting the provinces here. Almost all of them. Oh my god, I would have been so close to getting my second mission done. That would have been amazing. I think I'm not gonna get get all of that though because I'm gonna get a lot of aggressive expansion so instead I'm just gonna get the money since it's just me I don't have any allies in this and maybe just so maybe make them release some vassals here or just take Sarohan and Sugla why not think we can agree Sugla is a it's a pretty fascinating place for us to take right lads okay time to lower war exhaustion improve stability they they went up to 19,000 holy shit okay I'm gonna make sure my trips are a little bit closer to each other in that case we do have a little bit of a coalition forming but that is to be expected did. Uh, however, we got military tech, so we should be fine. So we got Crimea, Karaman, Chandar, Ramazan, and Fezan, which is essentially the Anatolian Balix. I'm expecting these guys will join, but of course they cannot because they got the truce with me in a few moments. Dulkadir is going to get annexed, I'm assuming, by uh, the Ottomans, so we don't need to worry about them either. Wait, what? Tunis? Really? Oh, they got 53 and they joined. What a bunch of schnobas. Oh, dude, I love the freaking notifications. Like, actually, man, you can summon a diet. Thank you for telling me. I literally just forgot about that. So I really appreciate it. And there you go. We can do this quickly here. And we can get uh, better relations with our burgers. Buyash Nokos. We went up to 38 loyalty. Amazing. And yes, in case you're wondering. We went up to 14% crownlands. By taking the lands that we took from the Ottomans in the first war. And we haven't even had five years. So just now I would have been able to take the crownlands for the first time. But I got to wait until the war is over. Nice try, Otta, bro. Nice try. But that's not going to cut it, man. It is not going to cut it whatsoever.
whatever. Let's get our palace cards and everybody else back. Ottomans cease paying tribute. We will demand 100 ducats from the Ottomans or else we will release Orhan Celebi and cause a pretender uprising. Or he's going to stay in Constantinople and we get 50 Diplo. Ooh, pretender uprising, you say? That does sound really juicy. But no, we need the Diplo points and I don't care about you pretenders because I'm going to wipe you out very soon. Holy schnabadobes, 21% please fall. We actually had quite a few forts that fell super fast in this run. Like a lot of forts that fell super fast in this run. 261 days. There you go. Exactly my freaking point right there, boys. I'm wondering if they changed something and then forts fall a lot faster. Or maybe it's just the five siege guy that I had. Yeah, note to self, don't attack in Highlands because uh, we won that, but we, we lost a few units. All right, let's do something. So by giving Uskub directly like this to the Bulgarians, it's only four war score and uh, 1.5 aggressive expansion. If I was to do it from here, it would be seven war score, but this only applies to the, and more aggressive expansion, but this only applies to the war target. Remember that, guys. So the rest of these, we're going to give via the uh, interaction here, of course. Return to my beloved Vasalius. There you go. And that one. And then can we take the entire coastline? No, we couldn't. We still miss, we're, we're still missing Aydin. But we would be able to get a little bit more money, though. 63 aggressive expansion. Not bad. Now, I think I'm going to do this. Just get the cores, because I do have a little bit of aggressive expansion. And I'll take Bolus, so I have access to Chandar. And I'm going to take Chanik for the same reason, so I have access to this area. That would be way less aggressive expansion by the time we enforce this even less because it's going to keep on going down right of course we're also going to take all the money in that case so we fix our economy and then after we'll just focus on the serbs the neapolitans and so on dude this guy is 57 freaking years old holy snaps not gonna let them take that fort they were trying to rush for it but now they're backing off because they see me trying to reinforce it no i'm not gonna let that nope nope get out of here ottomans i know you want to take it but it's mine it is mine it's my fortification you stay away from it right now you stay away from from you hear me you stay right away from it yeah of course they're gonna go for it oh you scumbags you actual freaking scumbags come on reinforce quick 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 they got their own reinforcements but um but yeah it should take a while oh there you go 71 percent because of chadicus 5 cgs maximus over there so go kill them off hopefully we wipe out some of their ships let's go baby wipe out those units get them out of here get them out of here let's go on corrupt they kind of did me a favor by wiping out dulkadir because dulkadir would have joined the coalition against me a hundred percent let's face it um gonna need to get rid of Akoyunlu's trips too. They're a little bit of a... Oh, actually, hold up. Akoyunlu's getting a task wipe. 43-48. I just need to win a battle against them. That should be enough for me to get uh, rid of them from the from the coalition. I mean, from the enemy alliance, I guess. Or they just need to lose one more province to the enemy. One of the two works for me. Let's go, baby! Please don't reinforce that. Come on, come on. There you go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, really? Really? That army might get a task. Let's see. We do have Giovanni in it, so fingers crossed it does. At least maybe we can retreat over to Ankara. That would be pretty good. Come on. There you go. Retreat. Thank you very much. Consolidate. We need to hire more units right now. We don't have enough units. And we've uh, we've wasted a lot of our mercenaries, actually. Let's do this. They seem like they might be willing to uh, piece us out. They're not. 3845. Come on. Really? Dulkadir, Akoyunlu, whatever the schnapps, man. Get out of here, bro. What are you doing with your life, man? What are you actually doing with your life? What are you even do- Why are you even helping the Ottomans, bro? They're gonna wipe you out if you help them. That's what happened, okay? Trust freaking finally, man. Let's go before they take this freaking fortification. Can we do our peace deal, actually? Do we need to wait for any longer? I, I kind of just want to piece them out. 85 war score. You know what? 85 is better than nothing. I'm gonna do it now so I can focus on other stuff. And let's go ahead and go back home. We need to wipe out those rebels. Come and... And there you have it, boys. In just seven freaking years, we completely exposed the Ottomans from the Balkans and we got the entirety of their northern coastline. If that doesn't say amazing start, I don't know what does. We can do conquest of Bulgaria or reconquest, better yet, of Bulgaria now. But yes, Nokidox. We get a general that gets an extra shock. What is that guy? We didn't get anybody. I, I got no general. What the hell are you talking about? Where's my general, bro? No? I got... Oh, is this the guy? Oh, it is. Theophilo saying... Wait, did Giovanni pass away? No. Can we get an F in the chat for Giovanni? Giovanni, my boy, literally made it so that we win most of the battles. He was the MVP of our campaign so far. Pay off that one loan that we got. And I could technically make Rebizond a Diplo vassal. I'm thinking to wipe, just annex them. Let's make these guys our uh, Pronoyer now. Do -do 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 -do. We can only have a limited amount of Pronoyers, by the way, for obvious reasons. Otherwise, this is going to be massively abused. And we're going to placate them a 
little bit. Our leader is right now 58, so he's not gonna be around for too much longer, if you know what I mean. Now, in order to inherit them, we need to also get uh, this enacted, retract, retract right to uh, inheritance. So we need to make sure they got below 15 um, liberty desire. So we're gonna do this twice, and we're gonna be developing maybe, or yeah, I guess developing would be the best option. Kind of sucks that I'm losing a little bit of uh, mana points, but it's fine. There you go. So now we can do this, wait for a few more days until 8th of November. In the meanwhile, we can use our mercenaries to get rid of our rebels, of course. Oh yeah, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Ooh, wait, hey! Scabada boom, bada 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 ba boop 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 boop. Totally, totally noises that humans do, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm not an alien, I promise. Liberty Desire is above 15. What? Oh, again? Bro, develop that since that's his, uh, that is a uh, copper mine. There you go. Now they're super pissed with us, but it's fine because they still have really good relations because we gave them back all of their lands. And of course, we're going to get a swarm of rebels. Not to worry, though. Fighting rebels is what we're really, really good at here in the Byzantine Empire. It's like what we mostly do all day. Take note, at the start of the campaign, you're only going to get one Pronoyer slot, only one. But then we get more slots unlocked as we progress in the campaign. So it's, it's just going to scale massively, boys. It's going to be a redonkulous. Trust me when I tell you, it's a redonkulous. Get zero stability. Beautiful. That is the most stability the, uh, the Byzantines ever had, by the way. And it seems like Renaissance happened a little bit late, but better than nothing. Now, with the new update and DLC, we can also ask for knowledge sharing as long as we, uh, you know, we get the relations and so on with them. We might get it, but in this case, it's not going to happen. We could call in the Pope in this war. Hell yeah. Okay, so here's the plan then. The plan is we're going to move our units to the Papal Lands, ask for military access, and we're going to attack them from the Papal Lands and uh, take our lands from uh, Neapolitans. To also lower the autonomy wherever we can, and it seems like we can seize crownlands gonna get some more rebels but we went up to 20 percent crownlands in 1452 with the mana privileges already given out we don't have all three though i forgot this one we don't have it so we got to get that one as well and we also got to get rid of um latin favoritism and integrate galata so we need to get a little bit more monthly income from trade which is not so hard to do and seeing as i only have two points difference here 4951 i will be able to diplovastalize trebizond so i'm gonna do that right now it's better than getting the aggressive expansion and it's also easier having them as a vassal at the start means i get a level three fortification here in the mountains of trebizond protecting my eastern flank essentially from any would-be invaders explain to me how the ottomans that just lost the war against me is attacking karaman i mean what the hell man where's the logic in this what the hell ottomans you're supposed to be collapsing right now not still be strong you bastards oh i actually forgot about the uh, new roman tactica boarding policy that offers us galley combat ability this would have been really good at the start of the campaign to be honest completely forgot about it to be fair but it's fine it was definitely not needed unlike admin points which are definitely in need all right so let's see how old is the uh pronoia of bulgaria he is 46 Okay, not bad. He's a 646 as well. That is insane, man. So in just six years, we got all of the Balkan holdings from the Ottomans, as well as their coastline. We fixed our economy. We got a massive manpower pool, and we're expanding into Italy and everywhere around us with the help of that amazing new mission tree and the flavor added alongside it. So if you enjoyed this run, don't forget to get the DLC for yourself. Once more, massive thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring today's video. Use the link below would really help out the channel so much and leave that like if you want to see the second part of this campaign and hey until the next time check out this awesome japan run and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support 